Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, we're going to be doing a few bits and bobs. But right now, as you can see, there's nothing on the ramp. I need to pick her up, chuck her on there, and let's get going. On your marks, get set, go. Just like that, she's on. So, I need to put the prop shaft on. I also have to adjust the handbrake. I'm going to show you guys how I've had to make the shifter cable fit. That was a headache. So, I've got a bit of explaining to do with that. Uh, also, my phone's pinging. Don't worry about that. We've got um, that to set up to work with the linkage on the gearbox. It was a pain in the bum, uh, and I'll show you how to do that. Also, I promised you to show you about the throttle cable bracket. Uh, we'll get into that too. Anyway, let's do it. See you in a sec. Right, guys, just to let you know, stick to the end of the video because I've got a surprise for you and she is spicy. Right, as mentioned, this throttle cable bracket, it was a headache. The Syntec manifold from Skunk 2 is designed for an electric throttle body which runs a motorized throttle body, so there's no need for a bracket to hold a throttle cable. I've had to build one. You can't buy one off the shelf, just like everything else in this engine bay, everything's custom. Unfortunately, the GoPro battery died, and I lost all the footage of me making this bracket. Um, but as you can see, it's beautiful. It came out just like I wanted it to. It's cleared everything around it, Obviously, my expansion tank and my header tank for my cooling system, and there's space all around here. It looks like it was made for the job. Uh, I'll jump in the car so you can see that she opens and closes lovely, and how snappy it is, and uh, go from there. So, here we go. And we are open and closed, and open and closed. There's no flex in the brackets. So, Absolutely win-win for me on the way that came out. Now, we're going to be fitting the prop shaft. She's a girthy girl. Um, we've done the uh, shifter cable, which I'll show you, and then uh, this is going on. So, um, let's go. Me, yeah. right now, I'm going to be bashing, <laughs> drilling the... Uh, a hole so I can fit my shifter cable. So, for the pilot hole. Got another hole saw out. And we're going to modificate. What are you doing, buddy? Stay there for a second. Here's a, a man cave moment. If you don't want your swarf going everywhere, that's what she said. Put magnets around the hole. And that picks up the swirl for you. Don't think of my holes. We're back. Doing loads of bits and pieces on this. There's loads of tiny bits that are actually taking quite some time. Uh, like today, me and Lawrence have probably spent three hours setting up the uh, shifter, the shifter cable. Hey bud, can I have a kiss? 
What's that? <laughs> Good boy. Yeah, Buddy's involved as well. Right, let's show you what he's doing. Shift the cable, runs up through there. I'm using the slot through the uh, handbrake cables to slide the shifter cable. Shift the cables out of the way of the, uh, the nice big prop, which is going to go in here, which we're going to be fitting next. It's going to be bolted up in fixing points. It comes down here. We found out that the shifter linkage was actually put on the wrong way, which means that this then, as it's in park now, no, it's not, it's in third, in third gear now, third gear was all the way up here, which means this wouldn't have flexed enough to get up there. So what Lawrence came up with is undo the shifter nut, get the lever and turn it round, which then brought it there instead. Now it actually works. It shifts into all the gears, neutral park, first, second and third and reverse. Uh, she's nice and tight and we have set it up. We have gone through the shifters to find out. Also, I need to bolt in my torque converter. Um, I've got to measure some clearances between the adapter and the torque converter and then we're going to bolt that up. So probably that'll be bolted up for the next video. As you can see, fuel lines are all in now. Uh, mechanical fuel pump. It's all done, all bolted in. Then we have up here, we have another fuel filter between the mechanical pump and the injectors. That's all been hard bolted in now. Look at the massive intake. Oh, as you can see, the vacuum lines have all been done now. I don't know if you can see them. They're all done. If you come back this way, I've not actually showed you the fuel system. We've got the lines, feed and return, another fuel filter as well. We come back here. They come out, oh buddy, they come over the axle, I run a twin return line for the return line because I'm going to run a flex fuel sensor in one of these lines as well. Uh, one return line goes to the swirl pot and one return goes to the main tank. So that is the swirl pot feed which goes to the mechanical fuel pump. I have an electric pump which only fills the swirl pot. And then uh, that's all that does is fill the swirl pot, nothing else. Uh, that's the fuel system, basically. Uh, I think she holds about 40 litres, which isn't too bad. Um, but it's not a road car, so we're not really doing it for MPG. Other than that, it's late. My hands are dirty. I'm hungry. Uh, and we'll be back on this again tomorrow. So... It's time to fit my uh, my pipe. Right. She's a bit of a girthy girl. Old billet yoke. So let's uh, let's see how this goes in. That's what she said. Oh. Gotta get the splines to match up without damaging the paint. Oh, oh, she's almost there. Give it a wiggle and uh, a little bit of a push. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Check it out. Slide in with the old lube. Right. Now it's getting the UJ to fit in the right way. And uh, we need to rotate it around a bit. Push that pipe in a bit more. That's what she said. I would stop saying that. <laughs> right. So basically, where she's going to sit. It clears the shifter cable nice and, and tight there though, even though she's tight, always got to be a bit tight for the main to fit. Now I've got to find my CNC'd bearing cup holders. Oh, oh, and bolt them in. This one, they, they've got to locate in like the cup and sometimes they're a bit of a, a hard wiggle to get in. Oh, almost. I think what I might do is use the top one first. Oh. And then uh, do the bottom one. Right. Now these are the, uh, that's what holds the UJ in. The CNC. High tensile strength bolts, very fine threads. And 
and uh, that's what we use to clamp the bearing with UJ. And um, the box straight through the yoke. The yoke's not threaded. So we will do. I'll do that one first. This side. I want to do this side first because it's easier to get to. So if you come here and see, that's what they do. They literally hold in like that, grip it and hold it. They put the washer on the back side, and then a spring washer. Oh, I dropped the spring washer. I've got the other one. There you go. And then we get there. Funny US size bolts and nuts because they're not metric. I don't understand why the US can't change the metric, but anyway. Yep, the other washer. And then I need to find that spring bolt that I did. Right, found the spring washer after a, a few moments later. Right, put that one on there. And uh, tidy whitey. We just nip these up quickly, not talk just to hold it in place because I've got to get the other side on as well so that's nipped up and then if we rotate around and this is oh that's not what I wanted to happen but it did oh oh she slid back in like a good girl that's why we have to go to the gym because uh Choice. Right, again, CNC cups going on. Do them. Pop them on, make sure they're in my wipe. There's a dirt and crap between the bearings. Ah, bonk my head again. Right. That one's not seating properly, but that's because I've got to push it in and then. Oh, there we go. Like a glove. Pop on the washer, pop on the spring washer, and then the funky imperial nut from uh, over the pond. Because these parts are from the States, because we don't do nothing like this here. There's a reason why the States hold all the records for the quarter miles. The big power cars is because they know what they're doing and they supply the parts which can cope with the torque. Not that I'm saying my Honda produces torque, my Milwaukee produces more torque at the moment. Right. That one's on. Reason why you date a mechanic with your finger action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here, here. Anyway, look at that. So if we take the wheels. <sighs> um, what gear do we say we're in? Third. Third gear. Oh, okay. Cool. Yeah. He's in. I just have to nip these up now. Gradually nip them up so I make sure they're done equally. And that, guys, is. I just gotta grab a bracket because there's a support bracket that goes here. Give me a second, I'll be back in a second. So this part here is honest it's just a literally this is an off-the-shelf ST thousand part. It's just a brace. There is a factory one that goes along here, but it's bent like a hoop. It's just to protect from the prop breaking basically. So this one's a CNC one. That bolt's there. Um and I'm just gonna pop it on now. While the car is in the air, we'll just pop it on. Two twelve more bolts. That one's there, and the other one on the other side. Quite a common upgrade for the ST thousand knot. You guys will know. All right, grab the ratchet. They're fairly snug and uh, 
firing these uh, bolts up, UJ, but actually, she's in. And great fit. JW Speed back in the States, got the prop made for me. Thanks, guys. And uh, that's another bit done. Closer and closer, we're getting there, guys. Six sexy. Right. Oh, I have to take the oil pan off and weld the temperature bung in for my transmission fluid. Uh, that'll be obviously coming next. Nine. Ten. Whoa. Oh, you caught me uh, in my training. Um, I've got to get big and strong again because I've uh, I bought myself some muscle. Follow me. Oh, fuck's sake. How many are you doing? Okay, ready? 